Adventures, welcome back to the channel. It is another spinnaker I am going to feature today. So typical spinnaker cardboard box in uh, this deep blue these days that they're giving. Uh, so without further ado, I'll just open it up because you've probably seen this before if you follow uh, Watchers. Uh, simple influencer guide, uh, tag there, microfiber cloth for cleaning and a disc and powder. This is typically what they give these days. So let's take it off the blue cushion there and just uh, undo the buckle so that I can uh, review the watch proper. So guys, this is uh, the Spinnaker Sorrento SP5067. This is the 03 model uh, for this black PVD case with a black dial. It does also come in plain steel models, two different plain steel models uh, with a brown dial and a blue dial. This is uh, the release information uh, that I have gotten. Now, this uh, is an update of an old Sorrento. You know, previously, they did have a Sorrento that was model SP5034, so quite a while back. That one had center three hands with an open heart at the nine o'clock position. Uh, I don't know how long ago that was available. This one I'm recording just before the launch date. The launch date is the 12th of February and then purchase available on the 27th of February. So I don't know the exact MSRP that this is going to go for, uh, but going by their usual model ranges, I assume it's going to be around the $350 range, probably slightly cheaper if you sign up earlier and I'll put any discount codes that I know down the bottom in the description as always. Okay, guys, let's just move on to talking about the movement in this watch then. So this uh, watch features the Miyota 8218 uh, specs I'm going to put on the left of screen. They're not going to read it out for you guys because you've already seen this in numerous watches that I've already reviewed. So uh, it does have a quick set date. In this case, is implemented on that uh, gold tone steel boarded window at the three o'clock position on that dial that you can see there. Uh, but as you can see there on the description, it does not hack. This movement is a non-hacking movement. Rated accuracy listed on the left there. Uh, in actual use, this watch has been about plus 13 seconds per day, which is you know pretty good. You know, I, I don't uh, mind that type of uh, accuracy regulation at all, and I probably wouldn't bother opening it to regulate it any better. And I think plus 13 is okay in my book. Some people would like it a bit better than that, in which case you can actually open uh, this case back and regulate that Miyota quite easily yourself. It's not hard to do that at all. Okay, moving on to the case then. This case here, obviously you can see is black PVD. It is 316L steel, as is just about all spinnaker watches that I've ever uh, reviewed. 43 millimeters is the diameter of this particular case. The case thickness is 13.5 uh, millimeters and the lug width is 22 millimeters, as you probably would expect with a 43 millimeter case here. Lug to lug distance is pretty substantial on this watch here. It's actually 49.5 millimeters between my thumbs there. So it's, it's a pretty tall watch if you consider uh, the lug to lug distance, you know, at the limit of my own wrist and probably at the risk of many people, you would consider that close to limit. Overall weight is only 86 grams because it is a leather strap watch and it's not a particularly chunky case. So this one feels very light on the wrist. Moving on to the finishing then. I'll just show you the bezel uh, housing there. Okay, it's actually a polished black PVD bezel housing. Uh, but if you move off the bezel, uh, most of the rest of the top here is brushing. So horizontal brushing at the top surface of the lug there, uh, vertical brushing, on the case side, I'm not sure if that's going to come through, but the case side has a vertical brushing there. It does have a slight uh, bevel right on the on the edge here, and then at the bottom, it's actually a circular brushing at the, the case bottom. So most of this case, unlike many spinnakers, is actually brush, mostly brush case. Uh, the, the steel uh, display case back, of course, is as you can see there, it's not black PVD, it's just naked steel. See the nice uh, details around the, the side there, including uh, the model number, water resistant to 100 meters, all stainless steel and whatnot, and that uh, spinnaker decorated rotor, as, you, if you, as you've already seen in many uh, spinnaker pieces, pieces that I've uh, shown you on the channel. 
Okay, so taking into account that screw-in display case back, it does also have a screw-in crown and that is uh, that has a bit of a laser etching there, you can see. A little bit more than laser etching, there's a, there's a slight, uh, I, I guess, indentation uh, on the crown there, but it's not very deep, it's, it's fairly superficial, I think, but the Spinnaker uh, logo is there. It's a screw-in crown with display case back, they've rated this at 100 uh, meters, so kind of basic uh, water resistance that will allow you to go swimming. It's got a screw down crown, so I would be confident about taking this into a pool for swimming activities. That's really what I would consider this suitable for. Okay, looking at the dial then, so let's just focus in there. So in the center part of the dial, that black part has horizontal etching. So kind of like a decking pattern, I suppose, uh, you know, reminiscent of the namesake of this watch. So Sorrento is, of course, a, a town in Italy. Uh, it's known as uh, the gateway to the Amalfi Coast. So lots of boating uh, around there, apparently. So this is kind of a, another maritime boating type of theme here. So nice little touch there. The center part has raised printing. So it's not just flat printing. I don't think it's actually strictly applied. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the spinnaker, the automatic, there's a slight uh, raised uh, feature of the printing there. At the five o'clock position, you're seeing the small seconds of this movement, uh, right? Just simple matte black inside the subdial there, but it's ringed with, of course, uh, this kind of brushed gold tone circle. So nice little details there uh, that they've gone for. Uh, now, moving outside to the second area, the second ring, if you will, it's got a nice little wood pattern. I think that's what they're going for. Um, they haven't said explicitly, but I assume that's kind of a wood pattern around the second ring there. And then on there is applied gold tone markers, 12 and 6 numerals, and then the rest of it is kind of like faceted gold tone. So nice little touch there that they've gone for uh, on this watch. And then outside that, of course, is the chapter ring. The chapter ring is actually printed on the flange. Okay, that's, that's where those minute markings are printed. Alignment is all right, I think, in this particular specimen. Right, the, the hands are kind of partial skeleton uh, baton hands in gold tone to, to you know match the rest of the gold tone on this watch. The loom is actually only on the hands in this case, so the hour minute as well as the small second sub dial there. There isn't any other loom application around the dial uh, that you can see here. And of course, I'll put a loom shot for you guys to check out how it looks like in the dark. All right, now the, the bezel here is interesting. Moving on to the bezel, uh, you know, we've talked about the polished uh, black PVD. The inlay here is actually rosewood. So let just you know, kind of let you let the light play on the rosewood there. So they say it's kind of sustainably sourced uh, rosewood bezel inlay. It's fixed with six screws, kind of gold tone screws in this case. So a nice little Nice little touch there, you know, kind of maritime touch, obviously, that they're going for. Uh, it doesn't rotate. It's, I guess, you know, uh, that, that, this type of bezel design, uh, I think it, it's fine not to rotate. It's actually not a timing bezel in any case, the way that they've marked this bezel. Okay, on top of that is a domed glass. It is actually mineral glass with a sapphire coating. So that's interesting. I, I've not had a watch, I think, any time with a sapphire coated mineral glass. So this is the first one that I've had with that particular feature. So I, I don't know how well it will function. I guess it will be more scratch resistant than typical glass, but it's not going to be quite as tough as a whole sapphire, I imagine. I don't know the specific characteristics and benefits of this type of combination. Let me know if you do about this type of crystal combination. Okay, so that's the description of the watch. Moving on to the band here, uh, leather, I want to say typical spinnaker leather. It's got hand-stitched uh, gold thread here to match the rest of the watch, but it's a little bit better than typical. It's it's probably uh, the best spinnaker leather I've seen. They've, they've changed uh, their supplier or they've changed the way that they've uh, treated this leather. It's actually far more supple than the typical very stiff spinnaker leather that I've gotten. Uh, and then, of course, just a, a steel buckle, in this case, brushed black PVD. Nothing special, typical spinnaker that you've seen before. All right, so that's the entire watch. Let me just put it on for the wrist shot now. So there we have the Spinnaker Sorrento 43 millimeter diameter watch on my 17 centimeter wrist. And you can see that 49.5 millimeter lug to lug distance is right at the limit of what I would consider 
acceptable for my size wrist. Okay, just so you see how it sits on the wrist there. 13.5 millimeters thick, so you know that's really how much it sits off my wrist height wise. Okay, there we go, that's the wrist shot. Okay, so that's that's really the descriptor part of the review here. So what do I think are the pros of this particular spinnaker? One of many that I have done. Well, look, I think it's got quite an interesting maritime theme in this case. You know, it's, it's obviously gone for that wood one. I think this is the first uh, wood watch that I featured, I want to say, in this entire channel. I've never had a watch so far with any wood. So this is the first one. They've gone for a kind of this uh, boating type of theme. So I think this is, there's, a, there's a lot of cohesion here and I, I quite like the name basis of this one. I think it's the best one so far. It's not named after a historical figure. It's named after a place. I think that is far better than what they've done in the past where they've gone for historical figures, but the watch probably has nothing to do with the person itself. In this case, I think this one is a lot fairer, you know, named after a town that is known for, uh, you know, being in an area where a lot of boating happens. I think that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so the black gold motif, I would say for this particular model with the black PVD and gold, I think it looks pretty cool. I quite like it. At first, I looked at this and I, I kind of didn't look again, but as I've used this watch, I... I quite like it. I, I like the black gold theme, I must say. That, that's grown on me. And then, of course, it's based on the typical solid spinnaker case craft. Nothing to complain about the, the case quality at this price range. They do do pretty nice uh, cases and, uh, you know, a, a reliable Japanese movement. Not the most fantastic Japanese movement, but a reliable one. What are the weaknesses? Well, look, again, the weakness uh, of the movement is something that I have to say. You know, non-hacking Miyota 8 series, I th I would hope they, they start to step up and, and move away from the Miyota 8 series. Yeah, you know, you can get a, a cheap uh, small seconds one if you want to use the Miyota 8 series, but I would hope that you, you need to start stepping away from non-hacking movements. It's just, you know, some people say it's obsolete. Uh, I don't think it's quite absolutely obsolete, but, uh, you know, I like to see Spinnaker as a brand, as they mature, step away from this. Um, I, I think the band still leaves something to be desired, right? It's not world beating by any means, but at the same time, it is the best feeling spinnaker leather yet. So I'm gonna put that as a plus and minus here. You know, uh, many of you will probably swap this out. Many people do swap out the fairly average bands like this for NATOs or something else. Uh, but you know, this is my comment on this band itself. So guys, there we have it. Those are my comments, my thoughts on the Spinnaker Sorento SP5067 automatic watch. I guess it's a waterproof watch, but it's not a typical uh, dive watch. Let me know what you think of this piece, this range that they will launch very, very soon. Um, guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.